story I'm about to tell you is a horrific one out of Lebanon, Missouri. And that is like the center of Missouri, which is the center of the United States. So America's heartland. And this story has got it all. It's got cannibalism. It's got police uh, misinformation. It's got tweakers. And it's got a beautiful young woman who was kept in a cage and then brutally murdered. Let's get into the case of Cassidy Rainwater. Now, Cassidy didn't have an easy life, but she always had an upbeat attitude and was always trying to make things better. And this summer of 2021, she decided to move in with a friend of hers just for a short time, James Phelps. She knew him from around the area, plus where he was living was actually a piece of land that used to be in Cassidy's family for generations and the surrounding properties belonged to Cassidy's family. So Cassidy felt real comfortable accepting the invitation of James Phelps to stay on his property until she got herself back on track. And Cassidy was in this relationship and Cassidy was in this situation just a short amount of time when her family noticed that she wasn't returning any calls, that she was no longer doing video calls with anybody. They hadn't heard from her in quite a while. So they contacted law enforcement and the cops went out to James Feltz's property. Cassidy's friends and family thought that he was a rainwater and you know gave them that last name because of knowing that Cassidy's family had, li had lived in this area and had owned property on Moon Valley Road, which was the last place Cassidy ever lived. Anyway, the police went out there on August 26th, following up on the missing person report filed by Cassidy's family. And they got out there and James was like, no, Cassidy's not around and they didn't see any sign of her. And so they went back. But then they got contacted again by Cassidy's family saying that they were positive that she was staying at 386 Moon Valley Road. So September 1st, they went back out there and this time James Phelps gave them a story and he said, well, Cassidy had been staying here for a short time. She was staying up in the loft in my cabin there and uh, she left in the middle of the night um, around July 25th or so and she met a car at the end of the driveway and I believe she went back to Colorado because Cassie had lived in Colorado before coming back to Missouri and accepting uh, James's offer of staying with him for a while. Anyway, they saw that there was absolutely no sign of Cassie and it was oddly clean up there in the loft, not, not anything out of place, which is very um, different from the way the rest of the property was kept. Anyhow, they came up, you know, no luck, and they thought that was the end of it, figured she that Cassie had gone to, to Colorado. But then, on September 16th, they got a tip from the FBI. The FBI had received this tip anonymously. The IP address that this cyber tip came from was in Germany, and on it, there were attachments of photos of a young woman kept uh, partially clothed in a cage inside a building. And, you know, she was very distressed. And these photos purportedly showed her torture and her murder. And when the FBI ran these through their database, it made a match to Cassidy's missing person flyer. So they sent these on to the Dallas County Police. And the Dallas County Police, when they saw this um, information just labeled Cassidy, they about dropped a brick right there on the ground because this was Cassidy and this was also the Moon Valley Road property. And they recognized the interior of James's cabin. There hadn't been a cage in there when, when they went and spoke to him. But, you know, this was his place. So they got a warrant 
and they went in force to James Phelps's property. And when they got there, James Phelps was at the table eating a sandwich, a meat sandwich. And the cops that went around the back of the cabin looked in the window and they saw meat hooks on the wall above the tub. And they were just like, this is creepy as all. Uh, so they spoke to James. He said he wasn't going to talk, but because of their warrant, they were able to seize his phone. And on his phone, they found seven photos of Cassidy in the cage and being murdered, hung up on a gantry crane, which, if you don't know, is kind of like a hoisting device. And hunters use them quite often to lift up a deer in order to dress out the deer and process it. Anyway, Cassidy had been strung up on that. And, you know, there was plenty of blood evidence and all that enough to take James away. And when they were looking around the house, they found packaged meat, you know, like you get from a butcher wrapped in paper and all that and labeled. And it was labeled with the date of July 24th and had Cassidy's initials on it. And, um, you know, that freaked them out. But of course, being professionals, they decided to send it off to the lab to get tested and didn't know immediately what this was. Meanwhile, there had been so many people that responded to the scene that some of them were volunteers and such. And so the word got out to the community and, you know, it went on fire about how there was this, you know, cannibalism going on, the packaged meat and questions about whether uh, this whole thing was tied to uh, trafficking and other missing people in Missouri. Um, one name that flew out there was Echo Lloyd because James Phelps also had a roommate named Timothy Norton, who was an over the road truck driver. He drove refrigerator trucks and he went to like Colorado, Texas, Michigan, you know, all around. And so people were wondering if, you know, this was some kind of ring or what. And then Timothy Norton was taken in for questioning. And at first, you know, when he talked to the police, before he got to the station, he was saying, yeah, he knew that Cassie had stayed there and stuff, but he didn't know anything else. But by the time he got to the police station, that guy sang like a canary and said that James Phelps had contacted him and told him to come over to the house and help him restrain Cassidy and that James then strangled Cassidy and he helped James take Cassidy out to the gantry crane. And then after they, um, gutted her there then they carried her into the house to the bathtub where she was um dismembered and packaged up into meat in the fridge and freezer and um, timothy kept talking and saying that he and james uh were into younger women um you know or teenagers and that cassidy looked young enough and um other disgusting stuff like that and he actually said that he and james trolled the internet and local walmarts to try to find victims so this sounds like you know that it was a chain thing and that's what everybody on the internet was saying that's what locals were saying etc and there were locals that were very concerned about the meat sandwich and about barbecued ribs um that that james phelps often would invite people over, feed them, give them um, barbecued ribs and, and different types of pork. But James never kept any pigs. And so that made a lot of people very anxious. And meanwhile, the police, the sheriff, especially Sheriff Rice, went public on like Facebook and stuff, making posts saying all this stuff being said on the internet is not true. It's all being made all fantastical. And uh, this isn't the case at all. And then on October 5th, the guys were supposed to be arraigned. But on October 4th, the property went up in flames. The cabin was burnt completely to the ground. 
There was like nothing left. If there had been any other evidence that hadn't been taken away yet, that was lost. And it was ruled arson. They brought in the bomb squad from Springfield, Missouri, which is the nearest big, bigger place. And they ruled that it was arson. They found trip wires and you know other devices that hadn't gone off yet. And you know once again, people were agog and saying, "Oh, there's more people involved." And then the sheriff went public saying, "Oh no, no, there's nobody else involved in this. The you know the only people." Uh, that are responsible for any of this are in jail right now. And uh, it turns out that he wasn't telling the truth about that, but, you know, I guess it's part of police procedure or whatever. Anyway, the whole thing goes to trial, but ends up having no trial because first James Phelps agreed to an Alford plea, which means that he did not admit any guilt at any point and that all he would say is that he felt that there was enough evidence that a jury was going to convict him. So uh, rather than go to trial where he was facing the capital punishment, he chose to do this Alford plea where he got life in prison without the possibility of parole. And Timothy Norton decided to plead guilty but he also made a deal so that he would get life without the possibility of parole. And in so doing, he claimed that it was sparing Cassie's family from the details. But um, a lot of people are saying that what it really was doing was sparing the public from the truth. Because now there was no further investigation. There was no looking into whether there were accomplices, whether there were other victims, whether, you know, any of that. Um, meanwhile, yes, the DNA came back on the packaged meat. The packaged meat that was dated the day before uh, Cassidy was supposedly last seen and, you know, was the date that Cassidy was murdered and apparently her murder was filmed by James and Timothy and posted on the dark web, which is where this anonymous person saw it and took some screenshots and sent those to the FBI. And, uh, you know, there's no real answers as to how big this thing is, uh, how far um, into the dark web these guys were involved. We know that James Phelps was an ordained, ordained minister, but also frequented um, sadism, masochism sites. And um, he was a frequent user of the dark web. And uh, Timothy Norton has been um, called creepy in a, and uh, people that know him say that he's a tweaker and that he uh, just would be sober enough whenever he wasn't doing his long haul truck driving. Um, so he didn't like lose his job as a truck driver or anything, but he did tend to like to date younger women um, close to teenage years, even though these are both guys in their mid to late fifties. And uh, what makes it all the more creepy is that Cassidy's bones were actually found on the adjacent property, which was part of the estate of Cassidy's family. And her grandpa had previously lived there. Her grandmother had a memorial stone and everything on that property. And creepily, when her grandpa died a few years before this happened, her grandpa's house then was also... Um, burnt to the ground arson and this was after her grandpa died so you know i don't know who the mad uh fire bug is around there uh sheriff rice says that they're still looking for a gray grand prix that was seen there in the vicinity the night that everything went up in flames on james phelps's property but um i don't know whether there's going to be any luck with that and uh meanwhile there's still this whole cannibalism thing that's been swept under the rug and Cassidy's mom back in 2007 was a victim herself. Cassidy was 18 years old when her mom disappeared, was reported missing by her boyfriend in a different part 
of Lebanon in Laclede County. And uh, he said that she had gone out hunting arrowheads and hadn't come back to their trailer. And, you know, there was a huge search for her, grid search and everything, no sign whatsoever of her. And then a year later, some of her clothes and some of her remains were found, but not enough to determine what her cause of death was or anything. And since then, her boyfriend has also succumbed due to a heart condition. And so there's nobody to question on that either. And it's just really a strange coincidence that both mother and daughter in the same general area have similar ends. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be uh, watching this after it airs and I'll be in the comments for the first couple hours and then I'll frequently go back and check the comments to see what any of you might have to say. And uh, let's get a conversation going. What do you think about the cannibalism in central Missouri? Thank you for watching. I want them to know that we all wish them a horrible, tormented life in prison. <laughs>